So welcome to Game Changers Nation Mastermind. I'm super excited because, you know, despite what Lay says, I did invest in a webcam because the other one was too grainy. So I got one here. It's my 4K webcam. So hopefully it's not as grainy, although I see shininess up here. Um, no, it looks good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I need, I, I, that's what I was, I was fishing for compliments. I, <laughs> I, need, I need somebody to stoke my ego. Uh, today's top. All right. So listen, I was going to go over two things. Actually, the original thing I was going to go over was how to work with investors and, um, uh, specifically flippers. But after our, my team conversation yesterday, and John, you were part of this. Um, we got into a conversation about where our businesses are and if our businesses aren't where we wanted to be, then it's just a, a a matter of we're not having enough conversations and if we're having enough conversations we're not having we're not going deep enough right and so some of this is sort of getting back to basics but honestly i'm i'm a believer like just do the basics really really well and go deep and that's all you need right you don't need the zillow flex you don't need to go spend a lot of money on this that and the other thing just go deep on the basics and i'll just share real quick some of the observations I had in my conversation yesterday, and I just want to open up and see where people are with this topic, right? So number one is like, as I'm having the conversation and there's conversations about like, hey, I should try this lead source, I try this, I try this. I'm like, hey guys, are we going deep enough on the people who know us, love us, trust us, our sphere of influence, go out there and networking, right? And, and I think going back to last week's conversation, sometimes we self-sabotage when it comes to that because they think about it, it's the highest rate of return lowest cost lead source that we've got and frankly probably the most enjoyable in most cases right working with people that we know that trust us love us want us to be successful and we want them to be successful yet oftentimes we don't go out there and have that conversation with them right and one age in particular in my group is like hey my family feels like all i care about is money and so if i go and ask them for business i'm just going to be proving them right that all i care about is money bring in sean and so that's one of those things like those internal conversations that we're having that we we, we might be self-sabotaging us or preventing us from going as deep as we need to go on asking for referrals networking right we need to be going three levels deep and i gotta tell you most agents i know go don't even go one level deep and the really good ones maybe go one or two levels deep does anybody know what i mean other than marcus what i what's mean that, by three, what, level, three levels what's deep that, what's that sound like brother i, I want to i want to hear that yeah all right cool so i'm going to just and and so this is repeat but sometimes you've got to repeat this stuff right and so the permission script i love the permission script or dialogue whatever you want to call it because it it sets expectations and it gives you permission to continually ask for business so i have a spread i have a i have a sheet i will email it to the group but just listen on so the conversation goes something like this. Hey man, I was just at a class last week and my broker or my coach uh, just made me aware of this, this fact that I didn't even know. And it's that everybody that I know is gonna know five people over the next 12 months that's either gonna buy, sell, or invest in real estate. So, you know, it gave me a great idea. Like, why don't I create a list of people who would, would, would love to help me out but wouldn't mind helping me out? And I, and I thought like, Hey, would you be, would you mind? Would you be offended if I put you on that list? Right? So the first part of this thing is, is educating them, right? That this thing exists, that you're going to know five people over the next 12 months. And then at that point, when you ask them, would you be mind or would you be offended if I put you on the list? They're either going to ask what's involved or if they don't ask, then you offer what's involved. Like, all right, cool. The only thing that's involved is really two things, right? Number one, if you hear somebody who's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, that you make an introduction. For me, over email is best, 
where it has your con their contact information and my contact information. You can do it over text. Choose whatever method you want. The key is I want them to share the, each other's information and get them out the middle. We don't want them to be like, hey, I'll give them your information, Guillermo, or I'll give them your information, Marcus, because then you don't control the situation, right? So you're educating them, setting the expectations, what you want out of your referral sources. So connect this over email, connect this over text, it's where we, we can have each other's contact information. And I know you're super busy, it's sort of, I won't put that burden on you to keep on connecting us, right? So that's that's number one. Number two is, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to call you every three months. We're going to catch up, but I'm also going to try and jog your memory about who you might know that might be in the market to buy, sell and rest real estate. Would that be okay? So those two things right there, right? Like, Hey, make an introduction and I'm going to call you every three months to ask for referrals. Right there, that's the permission part of things, right? So a lot of us, again, going back to the initial part where we self-sabotage, maybe we don't call those people because we feel we gotta be pushy. Maybe they think we're only about money. We're now getting the permission up front. So mentally, we now don't have that limited belief. They've given us the permission. And so now you put it in your CRM as a reminder, right? Break up, I'm gonna use easy math. Say you had 90 people in your contact list. 30 in January, 30 in February, 30 in, in March. So you're contacting your person every day. You open up, your mind is free. You know exactly who you call, right? And then in April, you start it all over again. So you're touching base with them four times a year. And by the way, this doesn't have to be a phone call. This doesn't have to be text. This could be, I did this having coffee, lunch, dinner, being in real relationship with them. Okay. Now, once you have that conversation, you do catch up, you do ask for the referral. Sometimes, this is where I talk about the three levels deep, right? Sometimes we ask the first level, who do you know? Who's going to, interested or going to buy, sell, invest in real estate? Some agents don't start, don't even do that, but that's the first level. The second level is like, all right, cool. You can't think of anybody who's going to buy, sell, invest in real estate right now, but who do you know who's... Uh, just found out they got a promotion or found out that they've got, you know, a baby on the way, or unfortunately somebody passed away in their life, personally, maybe going through divorce. There's memory joggers, right? Of people who will be buying or selling invest in real estate. So your job is to ignite that memory, right? So I have a sheet there with a bunch of examples. That's the second level. What's the third level? Anybody, John, I already went this, through this with you yesterday, so you can't answer. Anybody else? What's the third level? No guesses? All right. Third level is, all right, listen, can, can John get married, nobody pregnant, divorce, any of that stuff? All right, well, listen, I want to just meet great people. And I love to meet a friend of yours because I loved working with you. I love working with you. And if they're a friend of yours, they got to be like you. And so I get that that person may have just bought last week, but that's not what I'm, I, I'm, I'm asking you to do. I just want to meet great people and form a relationship. Maybe sometime down the road, 10 years from now, they, they're going to buy or sell, or maybe they actually know somebody in there, their sphere of influence and network that's looking to buy or sell. That's the challenge that I'm putting on you guys. Don't leave it at the first or even the second level. Is go deep on that third level. Because what I hear most often is like, Guillermo, I talk to everybody that I know. And nobody's buying. Well, we might not be asking the right questions, but also we're not filling in that database and, and putting in more people into that database. So that in that example where I go 30, 30, 30, you got 90 people. Your goals, you know, let's get it to uh, 60, 60, 60, right? And then 90, 90, 90, just keep on adding into it. And and a lot of this, uh, guys, I, I, this is the way to build a, a hugely repeatable business, right? Where you're not paying incredible referral fees to these lead aggregators for what are essentially cold calls, right? The Zillows of the world, right? 
I don't mind paying a referral fee, but I want to pay a referral fee for somebody who's not ready to buy or sell or, or like, or, or it's going to just like, hey, it's going to waste my time. This is the business that I want you to build your foundation on. And so that's one component of it, right? That's your sphere of influence. The other part's networking. So when I say SOI, repeat referral, that's clients, repeat and asking them for referrals, but networking. The lesson I learned as a, as a lawyer, and it was um, um, Steve Goodman, the guru of like lawyers out there, emerging growth. He told me early on in my career as a lawyer, I had three breakfasts, I had three coffees, three lunches, three dinners every single day. If you're inside the house by yourself, trying to sell, and you find yourself in your house by yourself the majority of the day, you're doing it wrong. You got to be out there meeting people, talking to people. So when I dialed the phones, I got tired down on the phones. You guys have heard me before. I went down to Starbucks and I talked to the person to the left and right of me. All right, six foot rule. What do you do for a living? Cool. I'm a real estate agent. Networking groups. I uncovered this too. I just assumed everybody knew about BNIs or things like BNIs. Right? Who's part of a networking group right now? Can you raise your hand? Awesome, John. Awesome job. Good job, John. So for those people, and I'm not going to assume because this video is going to get to the rest of our group here. Groups like a BNI, and I, and and it's top of mind because I just went to one here in Spain. Freaked me the hell out, right? <laughs> I had to go speak in Spanish in a loud, crowded room and basically give a 60-second commercial what I did multiple times. Um, but, you know, that's a different topic, fear, right? Well, you got to get past the fear. But in any case, you you if you're going into a new market, in a new market, in a new neighborhood, and a lot of us are, right? A lot of us moving to Florida, moving from from Western Pennsylvania to Philadelphia, wherever it is, or from Philadelphia out to Western Pennsylvania, whatever it is, you know, we don't want the excuse like, hey, I don't know anybody here to be the reason that we're not achieving our goals. People have lived before us, right? So networking groups, B and I, I've been leading on that. So let me tell you actually what it is. It's a group where you go, you pay a monthly due. I don't know all the particulars just yet, but you pay monthly dues and they have a, a closed group. So it's industry participants from different industries, right? So you'll have a, do a do doctor, a lawyer, um, architect, a, uh, a real estate agent, right? And you're the exclusive real estate agent for that group. And the goal is that everybody in that group has got to give each other business. So if you're a group of 40 people, you got 39 referral sources immediately built in, right? They should be giving you all their real estate referrals. And you, have to be given too, right? We're not just taken. Doesn't work. They'll get you out of the group. <laughs> you got to give as well. So just again, basic, basic stuff. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I see Sean has raised your hand. Talk to me, Sean. What's up? Oh, that was an answer. That, that was an answer. To yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 that's good. You, I, I didn't connect. That, that was you and answer that you're part of the networking group. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I actually supported my own. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If you don't like what you got, go make it. I mean, it's probably more work, right, Sean? But mm -hmm. it's um it's not as strict as BNI. Um I was in a BNI group and it's like really hard to get the realtor spot in a BNI group. Okay. Um, they really like, I mean, at least here in America, uh, I mean, they really hammer the hell out of you. And I was finding that I was the one giving out all the referrals. Like I would have 11 referrals a week. And it was like the handyman, the plumber, the painter, the financial pl the planner, the banker. Um, I was giving the, the handyman got like five referrals a week from me. Um, but I wasn't getting anything in return. So I made, I decided to just make my own like little hyper local network. And um, we had 25 people in it now. 
So, yeah, and it's they're just all like local contractors, electricians, painters, plumbers. Um, but it does make you when you are part of a network like that, um, like at neighbors and, and people from like a few blocks over were, are always texting me like, hey, Sean, do you got a good painter? You have a recommendation like with my clients and stuff too so yeah i agree with the networking groups it is it can work if you're in the right bni um you can pull a lot of business from that like i mean my girlfriend shireen probably does 10 deals a year from her bni yeah i mean that's yeah. incredible 10 deals a year probably and i know it's right higher than average price point 350 right so good yeah. good, good business <laughs> Yeah, and she's in a good one. She's in like an upper uh, Upper Dublin or Ambler, one of them. And I think it's Ambler, but yeah. Uh, yeah, like she's got a home inspector in there, and she's she just does. She's gotten a lot of business from it. Um, I think maybe the chapter that I was in, it just wasn't that great. And I've even subbed. I've gone and been a sub for people in the BNI. The BNI is just. Uh, from my perspective, a little rigid sometimes, because like you have to be there at 6.45 in the morning. And then it's like, you know, you got to do a 60 second commercial every single week. And then you get to present every couple weeks. But yeah. um, the rules are really stringent. And I think it's because that makes everybody accountable. Um, but uh, for me, just for me, like I know plenty of people who have success with it. Um, I wasn't getting what I was putting out. So I just decided to start my own. And it's it's just like a Glenside networking group. And we all meet. I don't police anybody. Like if you're not going to show up, then you're not going to get a referral. But yeah, um, yeah I, I just, that didn't work for me. That group that I was in the BNI group. Right? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And like, listen, I'm not, I, I'm not here to, uh, to yeah. promote any particular, uh, networking group or be a commercial for BNI. It's just top of mind. Cause I was out of that. Yeah. You know yeah. what else is a really good networking thing is Dick diversified investors group. Never. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they I, have that in Spain, but they definitely have them all over Pennsylvania. I don't know who else is in Pennsylvania, but that's a really good one. Because you're meeting with um, people who are investing in real estate right now, which is great because they don't care about interest rates and they're just looking for a good deal. And you find out a lot at these meetings. Plus, if you become like a full member, you get discounts at like Home Depot and Lowe's and all of those places. Yeah. You know? That's great. So, all right, that's I my mean, two cents for today. <laughs> no, that's perfect, John. That's perfect. Like that's that's exactly what we want here is share information. Like uh, I was part of uh when I was on the forty a forty on the forty right, and it was in Jersey when I was trying to break into the Jersey market. And so whatever it is, the idea here is network. Get out into a group. You know, go out to events if it's not a formal networking group. But I do like the networking group doesn't matter which one it is right and some are gonna be better than others and you're probably gonna have to try a couple of them right right the first one may maybe the perfect one or it might not be but that should be part of your business platform or business plan is have a networking group that you're part of uh to use edward you know tribe of brothers but tribe of sisters that whatever it is that support each other and want each other to be successful and yeah, you know, you're locking arms together, right? Going forward. Yeah. I mean, I have a I have a group of um guys like investors and uh, they all do different stuff. Like they also as in addition to investing, they do contracting. They do they all help each other out, right? And so I got in with them and they are like my biggest source of business. There's probably 10 of them. Um, yeah. but I give them business. I throw the electrician business whenever I can. Um, the painter, the, the contractor, like I, he actually builds houses. So then I get to sell the houses that he builds. Like, yeah, I like that. 
So yeah, it's cool. Um, but yeah, I agree. Networking is like my biggest um, lead generation. I, awesome. I, I'll, I'll do that all day, then get on the phone and make calls, you know? I know we talked what, about this before. One, but. What, one thing I know that doesn't work, and we're all guilty of it, is doing nothing. And right. there's, there's, if you've ever heard Ed Milet speak, and I truly believe this, and I've lived it, is we're all one day, one conversation, one connection, one deal away from everything changing. And it, it is so, it is so important to just not overthink things and just make the connection. Go out, meet someone, connect for coffee. I was, I have a little group that meets with me every Monday and Wednesday. I was telling them, you know, I, I'm big on creating strategic partners. I said, create a strategic partnership with a, uh, a pizza place, right? That will allow you once a week to buy pizzas at cost. And this is where, like with relationships, it's all about relationships. So guys, I'm going to give you like some real cool relationship stuff here. If you, and, and women, but just because I coach guys, if you want your wife, girlfriend, significant other to go wild over you, just take something off of their plate that they don't have to do. Whether it's laundry, getting the house cleaned, uh, making dinner, whatever. So my idea was just call, just call the Smith and say, hey, you don't, have to make, you don't have to make dinner Friday night. I'm delivering it for you. But make, making the connections, and a lot of times <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because this literally just happened to me last week where an agent wants to get together with me, and uh, I, it actually happened twice. And I was so reluctant because I wanted to stay home and work. The one became a mortgage client. The other one joined EXP. Because I just met them for lunch or coffee. And I believe in our business, we get so caught up on AI, chat GPT, and, and we're locked in our house. Like, I'm meet Ed Stratton. I got to figure out where you are. Text me where you're at, and I'll come meet you. But, like, I guarantee you, when Ed and I get together today, something's going to happen. Because we're going to be out in public. You know, uh, my, my mindset is a deal a day. A deal a day. It's either a mortgage, a referral, somebody joining EXP, or a coaching client. But I'm hunting. I am getting a deal a day. And the way that I do it is, and we could go deep here with my natural strength. What is your natural strength, man? Let that shit fly. Let it rock and roll, man. Dig deep in your soul. But what does the best authentic version of myself look like? And sometimes for me, that is, uh, hey, Mike, I don't know if you, uh, if, if you know this, but not only do I do a bunch of coaching and training, but I do everything real estate. And honestly, I'm not going to be able to feed my family if you don't find me a deal this week. <laughs> And I smile, but sometimes that's the authentic me, easy, lucrative, and fun. It's got to be easy, lucrative, and fun for me. If it ain't fun, it's not going to last for me. If it's not easy, I got thrown out of college with a .69 grade point average. Clearly, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. And if I ain't making money, then I'm just another nonprofit, man. Right? All right. Nice. Love it. Make the connections, man. Just make the connection. You're all it beautiful really souls. Everybody can learn something from you. Everybody can, uh, you being you allows them to be them. It's a beautiful thing. 
And just get them talking about themselves because people love to talk about themselves. And then you just shut up and you listen and then you, you know, you cultivate your conversation from there. As I mean, that's kind of what I do. I don't, I also don't have a college degree. I'm the most least educated person like <laughs> that I know. Um, but I found a way to turn like the gift of gab into a business. So it's, and, but there is an art to it. And I agree with you. And it's like, you gotta like sit back and listen to what they're actually saying. Cause you get them talking about themselves. Then, you know, like where their pain versus pleasure, all of that, you know, like what their wants and needs and, um, but I always turn the conversation like onto them. Tell me about what you got going on. Tell me about your kids. Tell me about the school district, like stuff like that. And then um, I feel like it, you know, it just goes easier from there. Yeah, I agree, Sean. And and you probably do this too. I would the, the thing I would add to that is when you're listening to them and ask them about themselves, be thinking about how you can help them, right? I, I almost operate from the, hey, what can I give first before I ask, right? And so if it's a lender, cool, here's a lead on on, on, on a, a, a purchaser, whatever it is. And, and even if it's somebody who's not uh, running their own business or has a has a different career or, or is a homemaker, right? Like homemaker, they got, they got, they're running a household. That's a business itself. Right? They're the gatekeeper. They, yeah. I call them the gatekeeper. Well, they, they <laughs> so, might need a plumber, right? They might right. need a person. Right. They might need this. That. They might need a babysitter. If right. They got, like, those are the things you come and help them, right? They and remember be, that. Right? Yeah. They'll remember that. You'll, they'll help you, too. Yeah. For real. You, yeah. It's, it's just kind of how I've always done it, like, over these years. But... um <clears throat> yeah, it is all about the relationships. So if they if they know that they can come to you and like trust your referrals, uh, my plumber, I I think I keep his business in like alive all year long. Yeah. Um, I've referred him so much business, and then it comes back tenfold on you too because then he's going to refer you business. And then when you need a new garbage disposal, <laughs> you get it for almost nothing. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I mean, it just happened to me. That's why I'm saying that. I needed a new garbage disposal. And so let, me, let me ask you guys something real quick. And this is, goes back to what we talked about last week or the week before. Do, do you trust yourself? Would you hire you? Would you refer you? This is a question I always ask myself, right? Do, do we have enough raving fans? And if we don't, I like look inside and go, all right, where can I get better? And again, it's, it is, I got to, and this is not a plug for Ed Stratton, but it's just a, but it is, is an agent, um, literally in three minutes goes, Oh my God, the dude called me. He's already on it. He's connected with my client. This guy's an animal, man. Thank you so much. Like that's what we want people saying about us. Does that make sense? And if they're not, what do we need to do? Like I have no problem. I, I taught, why did you join? Why did you join EXP? I, I don't say, personally, I don't say, oh, well, the stock and the rev share. It's, yeah, I say, because I trust Guillermo. Because I want to be in business with really smart people. Right? So it's, it's always it's always an inside job, man. It's always an inside job. What is inside me that I can get better at, that I can grow on, where we become the attractor factor? I love it, man. That's great. And and you, you do. The other thing you said is be your authentic self, man. Right. 
you're going to track. I think some of us like got to pretend to be something else because we think that's what the community or the industry or the buyers and sellers want you to be. Right. And you just got to be you, man. For real. Just. Just be you. Hey, guys. Can I say something? Yes. So, okay. So, um, I'll be transparent here. So, I, before my call with Guillermo yesterday, I used to struggle calling on my uh, my sphere of influence and, like, my clothes and all this stuff. So, yesterday, uh, I talked to G about it, um, and he gave me some some good tips. Great, great guy to be in business with, may, might I add. Um, he gave me some tips. He gave me a really good script that uh, I could use, um, the permission script. Um, and today, I... Uh, well, yesterday I started making some calls. I had great conversation with like close people, uh, people that we clients that I've closed, and I was like, "Wow, this was this is a lot easier than I thought." I was like, "Okay, this is fun. <laughs> it was fun." So today I had a um, a really good conversation with. So I called up one of the people that we closed uh, last, uh, a client that I closed uh, last year, I think it was, and this dude was like, "Oh, we're like you know, what I mean? like just like tell me what's going on." Um, and then I, uh, I, the, the thing I want to talk about is because he, he's got a business, he's got a kid coming on the way. Um, and when he mentioned that he had a, a baby on the way, I used one of G's jokes. I was like, you should name him Darwina. Uh, like, cause it's a girl. You should, you should use it as you should, you should put her, her middle name is Darwina. And he, he, he was, he just started cracking up. He was like, I gotta, I gotta tell my wife to see what she's gonna should have think about that. And, uh, that, that made my day, you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that felt so great. Um, I'll obviously talk to him about business, like ask him for the permission, going to keep him on, going to keep him on, uh, uh, on, uh, like just follow up with him moving on. But just having that conversation was just, uh, fantastic. So thank you, G. Thank you, G, for the, for the permission script for, for, for helping me get past that barrier that we talked about. So thank you. No worries, man. My pleasure. And, and by the way, you, you got to pay royalties on that, that Darwina thing, man. That's, uh, that's trademarking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first one's free but you know if I, i'm gonna if I start speak, using i'm gonna start using that one like just yeah. name your baby sean it works for a oh, girl or a boy yeah, yeah. if it's right? a boy if it's it's a boy it's gear if it's a girl it's gear up right and so <laughs> that's free if i see it on videos though darwin i'm asking for royalties <laughs> that's fair that's fair uh but no nah, man like it, it really is sort of like the internal game like ed said like it's all like the internal conversations that happen man and this is so much more fun like i i don't i don't feel like i have any, any real superpowers and or any like stand out anyway in business i just came into this thing and said what is the highest rate of return and best use of my time and i'm like cool i like doing this hanging out with people over dinner food drinks i don't like the idea of door knocking right and again no people make a great living doing door knocking kudos to them just wasn't for me right when i just sat down and analyzed i gotta get out of my car i gotta drive i gotta door knock i gotta hit the door slammed in my face i'm like cool that's a way to make a living but it wasn't for me right I was going to look at a way that gave me a better rate of return for the time that I was putting in it and that I enjoyed doing. All right. So again, all you door knockers out there that watch this video, don't just kill me on it, right? Like, good. You like that? You enjoy that? Keep on doing that. Be successful doing that. What else? So who's, let me go back to the, who's going three levels deep right now? Anybody going three levels deep? I was actually going to make a comment, Guillermo, um, kind of on like the things that you said about doing things that are more natural to you. Now, mm -hmm. I think anybody who's listened to Marcus on the phone knows he's fantastic on the phone. Um, great at it, can convert any lead off of a phone call. But I think the thing for him was that even though he was really good at it, he found it a little bit draining because it wasn't necessarily his natural way of doing things. Um, so since we've been kind of revamping a lot of the things that he's been doing over the last couple of months, um, some of the things that we did to make it really easy, you made a comment about the hat. The other day, we got these like real estate related hats. We have a bunch of t-shirts that we ordered. I also have 
t-shirts if anyone can read this one about the hot realtor that I'm married to. Um, I wear it all the time. Um, <laughs> But we, you know, we recognize that there are things that we actually like doing and we're also extremely social. So anytime we go out, we'll sit at the bar rather than sit at a table by ourselves because it opens us up to conversation. And we don't typically leave anywhere without talking to somewhere between four and six people by the time we leave somewhere that we've been for like two hours. Wow. Um, and we found that that really helps. You know, we immediately get them following us on social media where we know they're putting out a lot more information, ways for people to get connected, um, giving out business cards, you know, all the old school stuff, but also incorporating some of that new school stuff as well. Um, you know, our son's in preschool. We gave out a bunch of thank you cards at the end of his summer program um, with gift cards in them for all the teachers. And, but we also obviously made sure to include his business cards you know just a small little note if our son said anything about them just to make it a little bit more personal um yeah things like that every time he goes to pick them up all the parents at pickup time he's always wearing his real estate shirt his hat everyone there knows that he's in real estate and it's actually created some really great conversations and we met uh, i think a couple that's also an investor in this area from that yeah. Um, so just like you said, just kind of incorporating those things that you're already naturally doing, because I think it makes it feel a lot um, easier and a little bit more conducive. I Not love a, yeah. that. I love that because you're yeah, not a screen in at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's all cool and things that we already love doing. Yeah. You're all right. Like, that's all you really have to do. And I was telling Ed the other night, like I, there's a thing that we used to do doing like the power of a personal note, a handwritten note for somebody to get that in the mail, or even if for it just to be handed to them. Um, people don't do that anymore. Everything is like social media and everything's online and emails. And and so like when I was at KW, we did this thing called November. And it was every day for the month of November, like in the spirit of thankfulness, because it's Thanksgiving and everything, you write 10 personal notes. And we were held accountable for it. Like you had to turn them in and you had to buy the stamps and all of that. Um, I got so much business from that. It was crazy. And it was, you know, it was during like the slow, quote unquote, like slow season. Um, but so I think I'm going to start doing that again. Like, hey, um, I'm thankful for your whatever. Just... You figure it out. I mean, tens a lot a day to write, but um, it. I mean, you figure that's that's a lot of note cards going out for yeah. a month. That's but, funny, Sean. You, you you mentioned that you did it when, when you're back at KW, and I was yeah. my first one. Are you still doing it? Because you were like, what a great amount of business. Sometimes we do something that works, and then we stop for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's because yeah, we right? we get too <laughs> busy. We get too busy, and then we let those things slough off to the side and forget that that's like really part of our job yeah. right is to keep creating relationships um but it is a great thing to to do i mean if anyone wants to partner with me as an accountability for and do it with me all that i'm gonna do it i'll awesome. do it with you sean okay all right that's katie and sean i'm gonna do that that's Congrats. Good and good job. And just dig in and, and do the things that you know that works and be authentic, authentic in terms of who you are. Yeah, like, hey, it's it's you know, around Thanksgiving, just want to let you know I'm thankful for your friendship or I'm thankful to, uh, that you pick up the phone every time I like whatever. It's dumb. But it's people love to get those things. I know I like to get a personalized handwritten note in the mail. Like, I like that when everything else is credit card offers and stupid crap like that. Like, it's nice to get a handwritten note in the mail and people love that and they remember it. And you could throw your business card in there, you know, shameless plug. But yeah. um, you, it, it, like, I, I just found that people were so receptive to it. Like, I even sent one to my ex mother-in-law who I didn't even like when I was married to her son. And now we have a great relationship and she's going to use me to sell her condo. So, um, like it, people just really respond to it. Love it. 
Awesome. Great job. Uh, I want to save some time for Ed Stratton. Um, Ed, you still there? Yeah. I have a question so, for Ed since I have him here. If, um, if, um, unless he has something to go. But my question was on uh, bridge loans. How do they work? Cool. Yeah. So bridge loans. And Ed, also, can you talk about after the Fed meeting last week, we talked about you and sort of just give us your thoughts after after hearing that meeting. Yeah, yeah. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you hear me? Good. Yeah, I got so real quick on the bridge loans. Um, so we'll we've got a couple of different options on what we can do for bridge loans. I'm only gonna do a bridge loan if I'm doing the mortgage for their purchase. All right. It's not worth the risk and everything else involved. And we really make no money off of that bridge. Um, the way bridge loans work, you know, general rule of thumb, they've got a property they need to sell before they buy the new one. We'll lend on 70 to 75 percent of that property's equity. So if we need to pull a little bit of cash out for the down payment, we'll do that. We've got some different programs where if we need to make them non-contingent. We can do those as well. So that's more of a case by case basis. If you have something just like you kind of did, darling, bring it up to me. We'll hop on a phone call and walk through it, you know, but if somebody is trying to pay cash for a home and they just need a short term bridge, I'm not going to be the guy for that. You know, if somebody's willing to keep a payment for six months and do a mortgage with me, I can do a bridge to help make that happen. Or if we got to try to figure out a way to get rid of a contingency. Um, we, we can we can work through that, but that's more a, a case by case. The rates on those bridges are anywhere between eight and eleven percent, depending on the scenario. But it's it's essentially a short term way to get them funds for a down payment or remove a contingency so they can get the house they want. Does that kind of solve what okay. you were kind of looking at, Darwin? Yeah, um, and we'll talk we'll, we'll more talk detail about on your client. Detail. Okay. Yep, hey, can there. I add a follow up question before you get into the Fed, there, Ed? The reason this came up is Darwin proposed them getting a HELOC on their existing two properties to then fund the purchase of their 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 target property. And it and for me, I was like, it seems like a lot of cost to put in place, but maybe not when you're talking about a bridge loan. With is that a viable option or or money? So you, you can I use HELOCs sometimes in place of bridge loans because the nice thing about a HELOC is there's no upfront fees. All right. You're going to have to pay a fee on a HELOC if you close it inside of three years, but you're going to pay for an appraisal and title. So you're probably looking at a grant, you know, so if for a grant, you can go secure the money you need for down payment on the next one. And like, we'll even do that. We'll look at it and we'll do a HELOC, turn everything into an interest only payment, restructure all their debt and get ready to buy and pull the cash. You know, it's really case by case. I love HELOCs as bridge loans. You know, if the house is already on the market, you're never going to get a HELOC on it. No bank or institution is going to give you a HELOC. So if you haven't put them on the market yeah. yet, get that HELOC in place, get everything lined up. I think that's a that's a great idea. But it's one of those things you got to run the numbers. The tough piece right now is any of that HELOC funding bridge loans. You know those rates are up there. You know if you're looking at normal loan products in the mid sevens, those are going to be mid eight, eleven percent on the situation. But if somebody's got houses that have, what are you going to sell them? Let's let's figure out how to put one and like game plan and a strategy behind it. So that's more just let's hop on the phone and take them case. But the HELOC part with a credit union, get them to put a HELOC in place. You know, it also depends on are the properties they take their parents, are they investment properties? Because that's going to determine how much equity they can touch in them. But it's cheaper doing that than a cash out refinance. You know, but it's one of those things we got to look at the whole picture and, and find out what makes sense, especially with this rate environment. Cool. All right. So cool. the, the big Thank one leading, leading into the Fed. So the Fed came out and I said the commentary is way more important than what they actually do. So they came out, they kept interest rates the same for Fed fund rates. And that's the rate that banks get money and trade money back and forth. Um, I was not a huge fan of their commentary. All right. So their commentary was expect rates to be higher for longer. Um, they're sticking to their guns on going to see 2% inflation. I honestly think that they've already done enough. And it's just a matter of getting energy costs down to get inflation where we need it to be. Um, 
They also came out and said potentially one more hike this year and, you know, kind of push that timeline on when possibly they're going to start dropping interest rates. I, I think after after their conversation, they're really, really focusing on the next set of data over the next 30 to 45 days that comes out on PPI, which is inflation, on the jobs reports and kind of on, you know, manufacturing and those different numbers. It almost sounds like they're having a tough talk so that the market doesn't get excited and start running in the wrong. This is just my internal thoughts on it. They're talking very tough because I don't think they want the market to overreact positively and then derail what's already in place. You know, I do like the fact that they said they want to see more data before they make a decision. The market's got a little bit spooked on their rates longer for a longer period of time. So interest rates, you know, have gone up since last week. You know, last week before the meeting, you're looking at probably low sevens. You're looking probably upper sevens for a lot of clients right now. Or, you know, I saw, I, I locked the loan at 8.125 yesterday. You know, so it's, they're definitely trending upwards. You know, all that, all that means is you just have to educate your clients more of what's going on. And then as rates increase, those, those sellers that have homes on the market, they're seeing that rates are going up. That's scary as a seller. So what does that mean? Your buyer has an opportunity to go work their deal. Like that's what I'm talking to everybody about right now that I, that I have conversations of, hey, this is your opportunity if you wanna try to go get a deal, 30 to 45 days on the market, go work your deal. Like we're starting to see it a little bit in Florida in some pockets of Delaware where house has been on the market for 45 days, shoot your shot and put your offer in. You know, we're seeing stuff go under contract, under asking, which is a totally different, you know, phenomenon from what we've seen. Newcastle County, <laughs> Delaware is the total opposite. You know, they're still going 50,000 over, highs and best, no appraisals. Um, so just really drill down on your market and what's going on. But it's, I would expect over the next 30 days, rates to remain at this elevated level. And then I'll give you guys an update after their next talk. But I think if we get some weak data for jobs and some signs to show that all their all their increases have actually happened, I think there's a really good chance at their next meeting, they'll give us more of a softer approach. You know, I, I really think they're scared that if they give us too much positive information, the markets are gonna rally and inflation is going to take off. Yeah, that makes sense. And are you seeing multiple offers? Uh, I'm sorry, are you seeing um, like a lot of sellers assist in this case as well? Because that's what I'm seeing on like our our, our listings. Like so, sellers assist, a lot of buyers, sellers assist, negotiating. It, it is very, very market specific. So like, give you an example. I just got one ratified in Southern Delaware like a $250,000 house, we got $12,000 of seller's assistance. And we didn't go over ask. We came in at offer price and got the seller's assistance. So you got that flip side. It's very, very market specific. Over the weekend, there was a house listed for $599 in Newcastle County, Delaware. We came in at $650, full appraisal gap, no home inspections, and we lost. And the borrower was putting 30% down. Like, I, it just blows my mind. Lost all that, but he ended up going a um, like fifteen thousand higher than that. You know, it's very, very market specific. So, like, this is your chance to really educate. Look at the numbers and what's happening in your market, and educate your clients. You know, because if you're in just an example, if you're in Sussex County, Delaware, and you're showing a client in Newcastle County, Delaware, you think you can get seller's assistance. You know, and you're going to get smoked. Same if you're in Newcastle County, you might go down there and give a high offer to a to a listing in Sussex County, not knowing that market is way softer. Like you actually, it's it's more of a buyer's market down there. So like really know your and, and put that out there that you are hyper focused on your market to your clients and explain that example. If somebody's not hyper focused on your market, they're not going to know if you're in a buyer or seller's market in your your little market. And it's so specific to price point. So. It's an opportunity I see for you to stand out. And like, that's something to sell to clients. Like I'm buying, I want my agent to know if I need to go over asking 
or if I got the potential to go under and get a little seller's assist in, like market that to your clients. Uh, you're, you are the local expert on what's going on on the ground. Because the news, they'll tell you it's crashing or they might tell you it's booming. But what you really want to know is what's happening in my backyard where I want to buy my house. Awesome. Great advice. Thanks, Ed. Cool. Any other questions, gang? We're, we're nearing the hour mark here. Hearing none. All right. So next week, unless I hear otherwise, I'm going to work on, or I, I'd like to talk, cover working with uh, investors, specifically flippers. So we can walk through the spreadsheets some considerations people have when they're looking to flip. Um, and we'll dig into that because we haven't done that in a while. And I'm in the middle of doing a, a sort of a project like that. So it's top of mind. Marcus, you had a question? Yeah. Are you still planning to host us next week with EXPCon? Um, I was. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. I mean, uh, cool. Ed, you good with that? I don't know if that's good there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll make it a half an hour because I don't know where the sessions fall in with this, but I like to keep the momentum, keep it in place. So cool. yeah, All right. we'll, we'll maybe make it abbreviated, but otherwise you guys have a wonderful day. See you soon. Yeah.